So, uh, so I, I want to add a, a couple of things, and then I, um, I'll pose the question of, um, you know, what we kind of know about pure care vote and start getting into some of the sections. So what I'd like to add is, um, I, I think of pure care vote in addition to being, you know, the, the, the advice and the wisdom teachings of the sages. Um, pure care vote it also gives us, a, a, like in miniature, a history of the, um, of the chain of tradition. And it serves in some ways as kind of the constitution of the rabbinic movement. So um, at the very beginning of Pure Kevon, I, I want to ask um, Karen, could you share the screen? Just go to chapter one of Pure Kevon, the very beginning of Pure Kevon. We can look at it on the, on the screen. Okay, so here it is. Um, the very beginning says, uh, Moses received the Torah at Sinai and transmitted it to Joshua. Joshua to the elders and the elders to the prophets and the prophets to the men of the great assembly. The men of the great assembly are the, the initial sages. These are the kind of the, um, the founders of the, of the rabbis. They said three things, be patient in the administration of justice, raise many disciples and make a fence around the Torah. Okay, so that first sentence there is a history. It's a list of kind of generations. Moses got the Torah at Mount Sinai. He's the leader of the community, responsible for teaching Torah to the community. When Moses passes from the scene, the leadership goes on to Joshua. He's next. When he passes from the scene, it goes to the elders and then to the prophets and then to the men of the great assembly, the sages. So what does this tell us about the, the rabbis, the sages? Any thoughts? Why is this statement so important? Isn't it like the old song? What do you mean? Tradition. Tradition, <laughs> yeah, it's like tradition. But this statement is even, it's super important. Without this one sentence, I don't know, Judaism might be, might be different. What's so important about this sentence? About the rabbis. Looks like Steve might be making a move to unmute. Steve, are you unmuting? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the important is the, the uh, who has authority. That's right. Yeah, that's it, right? So this, this the first sentence of Pirkei Avot tells us that the rabbis, the men of the great assembly and their um, you know, um, descendants, and, and intellectual, spiritual descendants, the sages, are in the direct line of the transmission of Torah from Sinai itself, from Moses. It is the sages who possess the Torah, right? And it's their, they get to make the decisions. They get to interpret it. They get to teach it to us. This is a statement of authority by the sages. It's the rabbis who wrote this text. And they're telling us in the introduction to Pirkei Avot, here's why we get to write this text and why we get to write the Talmud, and why we're the ones who get to interpret the Torah, because we are the rightful intellectual, spiritual descendants of Moses, right? The Torah is handed to us. This is, that's why I say this is the charter. This is the constitution of the rabbinic movement. So um, without it, the rest of the body of rabbinic literature, you know, its, its place and its meaning and so forth would be different. So I just wanted to highlight the importance of that statement. So Mike's question, if you couldn't hear, was, um, is, uh, is, is Pirkei Avot or is there some kind of effort around Pirkei Avot to make the wisdom of the sages um, communicable and accessible, I think, to broader, the broader community? Um, I don't know about the, you know, the, the audience, the intended audience, but what I do know is that within Pirkei Avot, um, the, the teachings of the sages are formulated in um, a variety of different ways. Some of them anyway are um, kind of clearly, I think, rhetorically um, formulated so as to be easily memorable. Okay, so for instance, Pirkei Avot, get, um, I think it's much of chapter five of Pirkei Avot 
um, gives lists, right? There are 10 things, there are five things, there are seven, that helps with memory, right? Um, another another um, rhetorical format in Pirkei Avot is um, what uh, we might kind of call um, uh, dichotomies. So for instance, there, there's, um, there's one that I'm thinking of, and you, you guys may know this one. I don't know the chapter and verse offhand, but we can find it for Karen to share. But it's a famous saying of Hillel. You know, you've heard of Hillel. Um, so Hillel has a, a famous dichotomy, which is, um, if I am not for myself. Or, uh, End of chapter one. Is chapter one? End of okay. chapter one. End of chapter one. Okay. So he says, if I am not for myself, who, who will be for me? If I am only for myself, what am I? If not now, when? That's kind of the dichotomy, right? It's like one thing and then the opposite, okay? And that's a rhetorical formulation that, again, helps memorization or, you know, easier, okay? So that may be, I don't know who the audience would be, but certainly the community of, of rabbis themselves in terms of learning the wisdom of the sages you can remember stuff like that, right?